so hello everyone i'm firstly uh, going to discuss uh, shortly about your author alfonso dodet and then i'll move on to the explanation of this chapter and then we'll take up a brief analysis of this one all right so uh, let's begin the first chapter of your book flamingo the last lesson okay so alfonso dodet as you can see here in on your screens that he was born in 1840 and he died in 1897 okay so uh, as a student you must know each and every tiny detail of the chapter in order to score good all right so uh, firstly you have to learn a bit about the author and then we shall move on to the explanation and then to finally analysis so alfonso doret uh, was a french novelist and he was a short story writer okay there is this important thing about him that he started his career as a school teacher so because he started his career as a school teacher so he has like very fine knowledge about the school life and we also see that certain amount of reference uh, uh in his a uh, story short story the last lesson to that particular you know phase of his career and then uh, he also was a part of french naturalism movement okay and uh, he has also discussed a lot about uh, the french uh, language in this particular chapter you know uh, so uh, the last lesson uh, is set in the days of franco prussian war actually and which was held in 1870 to 1871 so here i shall highlight this uh, date for you because it's important it's 1870 to 1871 so what happened was in this particular time france got defeated by prussia okay and prussia was then led by bismarck right so uh prussia then consisted of uh, nations of germany poland and parts of austria in this story french districts of alsace and lorraine have passed into prussian hands okay so here it says read the story to find out what effect this had on life at school right so i'll quickly read the chapter i'll explain it to you and then we'll move on to the analysis of it i started for school very late that morning and was in great dread of a scolding especially because Mr M Hamel had said that he would question us on participles okay so the child okay it's first person narrative some child is narrating the story uh till now we are not exposed to as to who is the child but we certainly become aware of the fact that this man Mr M Hamel is suddenly someone very strict in nature and that's why this child is in dread of him right for a moment i thought of running away and spending the day out of the doors okay so the child seems so scared that he wants to spend his day out of the doors and he doesn't even want to attend the class so you must know that uh this uh, teacher appears really strict to that particular child okay and all of you who might relate to it okay because we all at some point in our time have teachers who are uh, uh, maybe scary at times it was so warm so bright the birds were chirping at the edge of the woods and in the open field back of the sawmill the prussian soldiers were drilling okay so you can see the imagery here that the author is trying to create like they were so warm it was so bright the birds were chirping okay so all uh, of it is a very beautiful description of the scene okay where all of it is going on and at the back of the saw uh, sawmill the prussian soldiers were drilling so what is a sawmill sawmill is a place where you know uh, cutting woods it's a like uh, factory where uh, woods are you know cut down and then the prussian soldiers were drilling they were moving 
it was all much more tempting than the rule for participles okay so this child is appearing a little you know insincere about uh, you know learning participles or maybe he gets bored he appears not so interested in it but i had the strength to resist and hurried off to school but then he had the strength to resist his desire um to just to spend his day out of the doors and bunk the classroom but uh, of course he might be a nice child that he didn't do it okay and he hurried off to the school when i passed the town hall there was a crowd in front of the bulletin board okay so there is this bulletin board uh, which also holds a symbolical significance that you will know later on in this chapter so uh, when he passed the town there was th this crowd gathered in front of the bulletin board for the last two years all our bad news had come from there okay so this is the symbolical uh, significance of the bulletin board that all the bad news has come through it okay it's a source of all the bad news for the people right and what are those bad news is the lost battles the draft the orders of the commanding officer okay and i thought to myself without stopping what can be the matter now why is this bulletin board uh, board so you know uh, why it always uh, brings up the bad news it is because it was the war time all right so you must know that all this atmosphere reflects how a person during the war time uh, is you know aware of the surroundings uh, in which uh, most of the time only bad things are coming and how he is responding to those things okay then as i hurried by as fast as i could go the blacksmith watcher who was there with his apprentice reading the bulletin called after me okay so this watcher uh, this blacksmith watcher is reading the bulletin board and when he see uh, when he sees Franz hurrying off to school okay so uh, he asks him don't go so fast bub you'll get to your school in plenty of time okay so maybe he um, reads something or maybe he knows something which is why he's saying he's asking Franz not to go so fast to school because he will reach school in like he has good amount of time to reach it I thought he was making fun of me. Who is thinking that the watcher is making fun of him? Yes, the child. Okay, and what's the name of this child? His name is Franz. Okay, so and reached Mr. M. Hamel's little garden all out of breath. So he might be running so fast that when he reaches Mr. M. Hamel's place, he is just all out of his breath. Usually when school began, there was a great bustle which could be heard out in the street. The opening and closing of desks, lessons repeated in unison, very loud with our hands over our ears to understand better and the teacher's great ruler rapping on the table. Okay, so uh, here from this paragraph, from uh, up till here this line you can uh, see that what is the usual atmosphere of the school and how it usually goes on there but now okay so this but now reflects the contrast you know uh, this day has today it was also still okay so but now how is it it is all so still and now why is it so still and what is this contrast are you confused yes our child Franz is also confused so let's let's find out what's that contrast is all about I had counted on the commotion to get to my desk without being seen okay so what does just this child wants he wants to just slip into the classroom okay he just uh, don't want to get noticed okay why because he is so scared of his teacher 
but of course that day everything had to be as quiet as sunday morning okay but then because uh, he just couldn't do that because that day was like a very silent one through the window i saw my classmates okay and why also uh, he cannot do it because he has already seen his classmates in their places okay so now this uh, uh, boy you know he notices that he just can't do that because there are classmates who are already in their places so there's nothing that can save him now okay and m hamel walking up and down with his terrible iron ruler so how is his iron ruler it's terrible okay so it's it must be so scary so scary for franz okay that he is so afraid of that iron ruler maybe he is mm, afraid of getting beaten under his arm i had to open the door and go in before everybody okay so now there is no option left for franz so he has to open the door and go inside you can imagine how i blushed and how frightened i was okay so this boy is telling us the readers how embarrassed he was while entering to the classroom okay uh, and he's making us imagine through uh, the description that he already gave before that everybody was placed there and the teacher was already in the classroom but nothing happened so as unusual as this day is nothing happened and pamel saw me and said very kindly okay so mr m hamel he saw franz but he said uh, rather kindly to him go to your place quickly till franz we were beginning without you so okay so this is the statement of his teacher that uh, go to your uh, place we were about to begin without you and he is being really kind towards franz i jumped over the bench and sat down at my desk okay not till then when i had caught a little over my fright did i see that our teacher had on his beautiful green coat okay so uh, franz is so panicked okay that he couldn't notice the atmosphere and what's going on he's so short of breath but when you know after uh, a few moments when he has finally settled down he notices that his teacher is also looking unusual he has put on his beautiful green coat okay he, his frilled shirt what else and the little black silk cap as you can see here in the picture also they have tried to show how he was dressed up in coat and how uh, he was wearing his silk cap okay um, although this picture is not colored so you cannot notice whether it is of that same material or not but at least you can get the idea of it so uh, that he never wore except on the inspection and tries days okay so what were the days when he wore such kind of dresses inspection and prize days okay but today was neither an inspection day nor a prize distribution day so what's so unusual about this day let's find out besides the whole school seemed so strange and solemn and the whole school is appearing so strange to friends okay so something is fishy but the thing that surprised me most was to see on the back benches that were always empty the village people sitting quietly like ourselves okay so everything is so unusual but what is that thing which surprised friends most the back benchers okay and who are these back benchers the people of the village okay who include the old houser okay with his three cornered hat the former mayor the former postmaster the several and several others okay so all these people are all these village people are sitting at the back of their classroom everybody looked sad and oh, what is the expression on the faces of everybody they are sad okay and how sir had brought an old primer thumbed at the edges and he held it open on his knees with his great spectacles lying across the pages 
while i was wondering about it also friends is also confused about these happenings and he is wondering what's so wrong okay and what's so strange about it all m hamel mounted his chair and in the same grave and gentle tone which he had used to me so what is the tone of mr m hamel it's grave all right and it's gentle so he asks friends uh, my children this is the last lesson okay so he tells friends that uh, this is the last lesson okay so you can notice the relation of the title okay and you can give the reference from here in the chapter that this is the last lesson mr m hamel shall give them today the order has come from berlin to teach only german okay because prussia has won so okay they have received the orders that from now on what language will be taught german in place of which language french language right so this is a very important uh, aspect of this chapter you know the loss of identity of people because these are french speaking people but because they have lost to prussia from now on they cannot speak their language okay and this is uh, so disheartening to the people of that village that they are also disappointed okay and there is a sad expression on their faces the new master comes tomorrow okay and from tomorrow onwards the new master will come and from you know they'll get to learn uh, an altogether new language okay from tomorrow this is your last french lesson i want you to be very attentive and the teacher wants them to be very attentive why because it is the last lesson they will ever learn about their french language which they love so much now earlier they were not so attentive towards it but when they are finally you know um being exposed to the fact that this language will no longer be their language now they are like very much uh, in love with this language what a thunder clap these words to me so, okay so how were these words to the um, to this particular child they were a thunder clap okay this child uh, is shaken to his core okay oh the wretches that was what they had put up at the town hall so now he can relate to the past even of past event of the bulletin board okay where everybody was reading something so what was that thing this was the thing that they have lost to prussia my last french lesson why i hardly knew how to write okay and why is he so sad he is so sad because he will not be able to read uh, uh, this uh, particular language but he is also very upset because he uh, doesn't even properly know how to read and how to write this language he never took it so seriously okay i should never learn anymore i must stop there then oh how sorry i was for not learning my lesson so now franz is you know remorsing he's deeply in a situation of regret for seeking birds eggs or going sliding on the sar okay so uh, these were the things that franz used to do uh, in spite of studying french language my books that had seemed such a new sense a while ago so heavy to carry my grammar and my history of the saints were old friends now okay so like these uh, books were so annoying to uh, this particular child because they were a kind of baggage on him but now all of a sudden these books are appearing uh, like old friends to him all right so these books are not a burden on, on him anymore when the time has reached for him to finally you know give them up and m hamel too the idea that he was going away that i should never see him again okay so earlier you can see the contrast that earlier mr m hamel was such a scary teacher to him okay 
he was a cranky teacher to him but now he is not a cranky teacher to him anymore okay he is very sad on you know noticing this fact that he will never be able to see mr m hamel again now he is starting to miss him already poor man it was in honor of this last lesson that he had put on his fine sunday clothes okay so now he's making sense out of all the events that he noticed happening and now i understood why the old men of the village were sitting there in the back of the room it was because they were sorry too okay so now he knows uh, why is everything so strange today what's so strange about this particular morning that they had not gone to school more it was their way of thanking our master for his 40 years of faithful service and how long has this teacher taught the children this particular language as long as 40 years so he must be a very senior teacher all right and of showing their respect for the country that was theirs no more and everybody was sorry and everybody was trying to show as much respect for the country and as much respect for the language as possible okay so here you can see how the language is connected to one's identity all right and how you know uh, the theme of linguistic chauvinism prevails wherein a particular language dominates the other language and uh, the people who are being dominated they feel so sad about this fact while i was thinking of all this i heard my name called it was my turn to recite okay so franz is lost in his thoughts okay of uh, what will happen now and what had actually happened and all of a sudden his name is called upon what would i what would i not have given to be able to say that dreadful rule for participle all through very loud and clear and without one mistake so he with all his might he wanted to just read that rule of participles read those rules for participles like with all his might with very loud you know very clear uh, clearly you know in a very very good manner he wanted to recite uh, them but then he couldn't do that okay like because he was unprepared but i got mixed up on the first words he couldn't even you know read the first lines properly first words even uh, he couldn't recite properly and stood there holding on to my desk my heart beating and not daring to look up so he's all so embarrassed okay he is altogether so embarrassed that his heart is pounding and he is just not he's just unable to look up he doesn't even want to face anybody because he knows that oh he is mistaken on his part and he is embarrassed i heard m hamel say to me i won't scold you okay so uh, what did the teacher reply to him since it was the last day so he said i won't scold you little friends you must feel bad enough so uh, the teacher is also realizing that the child is already so ashamed so he doesn't want to you know make any increment in his shame see how it is okay so now here comes the uh, phase of his advice every day we have said to ourselves bah i have plenty of time i'll learn it tomorrow and now you see where we have come out ah that's the great trouble with el says she puts off learning till tomorrow okay so now he's also uh, he's so you know so grieved uh, with the fact that um, this child is unable to recite uh, this particular language and this child is also symbolical of the future of Elsace or, or or of the future of France okay because uh, this teacher says that this is the problem with France this is the problem with Elsace that they you know abandon things and they leave them um, till tomorrow and now is that tomorrow where things have ended for them and this is the result of their carelessness you can call it in a way now those fellows out there will have the right to say to you 
how is it you pretend to be frenchman okay so now he is you know saying that the uh, those fellows who have defeated you they will mock at you they will say how can you call yourself a frenchman if you are you aren't even able to speak it okay so that is the most uh, depressing thing about this event but you are not the worst poor little friends we have all a great deal to reproach ourselves with okay so he is at the same time trying to console friends that you are not alone child okay we all ourselves have made mistakes on our part by taking it carelessly and we are all you know to to be blamed together with you your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn okay so your parents are also to be blamed they preferred you they preferred to put you to work on a farm or at the mills so as to have a little more money and i i have been to blame also and he also is blaming himself have i not often sent you to water my flowers instead of learning to your uh, learning your lessons okay so uh, this particular person m hamel is also uh, very fond of gardening we can notice so he is sometimes used to uh, send friends to water his plants and now he's regretting that fact that he shouldn't have done that and um, he should have made a friends study so um, had he done that he um, might not have seen this day now and when i wanted to go fishing did i not just give you a holiday and so he is altogether regretting all these events then from one thing to another m hamel went on to talk of the french language saying that it was the most beautiful okay so here it's the very important uh, thing that how people of france are perceiving this language that for them it is the most beautiful okay and most logical language so you can also you know understand this uh, chapter better and the situations there by you know looking at the map of france okay so here is france and your uh, short story is located in the in this particular portion of elsace and lorraine okay and uh, how you know and now uh, they were to be taught a french language earlier you know they were taught french language earlier but now they will be taught germany all right and you can also you know uh, see other places here like uh, belgium and here it's switzerland and italy so you can just have a good knowledge about the place where it's located if you want to know it you can have a look at the map the clearest the most logical and how is this language to them it's the most logical the clearest language to them that we must guard it among us and never forget it because when a people are enslaved as long as they hold fast to their language it is as if they had the key to their prison okay so this key to their prison is a metaphor okay so uh, he is saying that these people have the key to their prison through their language so their language is something which will keep them safe from you know slipping into uh, end slavery <clears throat> slipping into the hands of slavery um, or enslavement you can say they then he opened a grammar and read us our lesson i was amazed to see how well i understood it all he said seemed so easy so easy okay so now all of it is appearing so easy to friends which was earlier so difficult for him to understand i think too that i had never listened so carefully uh, and that he had never explained everything with so much patience so of course everybody was you know mistaken on their part so uh, even france was mistaken to not learn it properly and even the teachers were mistaken to not teach it properly 
It seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and to put it all into our heads at one stroke. So he so desperately wanted each of the uh, child to just grasp as much as he could in this uh, particular period about French language, you know, he just didn't want to miss it at any cost. After the grammar, we had a lesson in writing. That day, M. Hamel had new copies for us. Okay, so he bought new copies written in beautiful round hand. Franz Elsays, Franz Elsays. Okay, and what was written over it? You know, it was written Franz Elsays, Franz Elsays. They looked like little flags floating everywhere in the schoolroom, hung from the rod at the top of our desk. You ought to have seen how everyone set to work and how quiet it was and everybody was so dedicated towards work and it was not noisy. Everybody was like so serious about it. The only sound was a scratching of the pens and it was like so and it was such a pin drop silence that you could hear even the scratching of the pen over the paper with the pen over the paper once some beetles flew in but nobody paid any attention to them okay earlier you can see that Franz was trying to avoid it at any possible cost okay he was just trying to uh, divert his attention in the birds and the eggs and everything but now these beetles are flying and nobody is paying heed to them not even the littlest one who worked right on tracing their fish hooks as if that was French too. On the roof, the pigeons cooed very low and I thought to myself, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? So uh, you can here notice the innocence of the child. He's thinking to himself that will, are they cooing so low because uh, uh, they are also defeated and they will also have to change their language. So it's an important line and uh, you might be asked to explain it so you can like say that the child is so innocent and he is so or oh, he's feeling so uh, remorseful and sad about the defeat of his particular country and not even the child but everybody around is so you know so uh, grieved by this fact of losing their language losing their identity okay that uh, like uh, they are questioning to themselves at uh, all the all the levels okay even the teachers even people of different ages people of different occupations and professions are like equally remorseful and they all are questioning themselves at their lang uh, at their particular levels and the child is so young so at his particular lang uh, level he is trying to question himself that uh, maybe uh, this might also happen that maybe they'll uh, they are so brutal uh, maybe that uh, they will make the pigeons sing in German whenever I looked up from my writing I saw M. Hamill sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing then at other as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little schoolroom fancy for 40 years he had been there in the same place with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him okay so his services you know as we have learned earlier also as long as of 40 years only the desks and benches had been worn smooth the walnut trees in the garden were taller and the hope wine that he had planted himself twinned above the windows of the roof. So again, you can see the imagery in this section, how he, the author is uh, trying to describe the situation around which Mr. M, in which uh, Mr. M. Hamill used to teach children. How it must have broken his heart to leave it also uh, in this person, Franz, is trying to empathize now with his teacher poor man to hear uh, his sister moving about in the room above packing their trunks so the, his sister the sister of mr m hamel is packing the trunks and because they are moving uh, to the to another country next day because of course 
there might be no occupation for him left because there is no need of French language now okay and of course they are defeated so they'll have to leave the country but he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very last after the writing we had a lesson in the history and then the babies chanted their babi bi bobu okay so uh, this babi bi bobu is like uh, symbolical of what that the time is over now and the last chapter the last lesson has been finished off down there at the back of the room old houser had put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands spelled the letters with them you could see that he too was crying okay so this person is literally crying out of grief his voice trembled with emotion and it was so funny to hear him that we all wanted to laugh and cry so you can hear noticed a mix of emotion in people that something funny is happening to them they also want to laugh but they are like so overwhelmed with the emotion and that they also cannot uh, contain their grief and they are also crying at the same time ah uh, how well i remember it that last lesson and uh, that last lesson you know is quite uh, quite uh, nicely and quite well remembered by the child because of the emotional attachment of course all at once the church clock struck 12 then the angelus at the same moment the trumpets of the prussians returning from drill sounded under our windows m hamel stood up very pale in his chair and never saw him look so tall okay so mr m hamel has turned like so pale with grief my friends said he i i you know he's trying to speak but he cannot speak he just cannot speak and he is like so so uh, um, and is so engrieved uh, but something choked him he could not go on then he turned to the blackboard took a piece of chalk and bearing on with all his might he wrote as large as he could why will our friends okay so because he couldn't speak so he wrote why will our friends means long live friends then he stopped and leaned his head against the wall and without a word he made a gesture to us with his hand school is dismissed you can go now okay you may go now so you know he made this gesture that children can now leave the classroom because of course this was the last chapter and now it's over so what are the important themes of this particular text we see the theme of war how during a war people who are defeated by the other force feel and what is their feeling and how language is related to their feeling and to their identity mm-hmm. and we have the theme of identity crisis again because people lose their identity and uh, during the war time and they lose their language and all of it is like interconnected linguistic chauvinism and linguistic chauvinism is linguistic means related to language and chauvinism is a superiority of one particular race over the other so the linguistic chauvinism means the dominance of particular one particular language over the other language and how it affects the people of one particular country or place uh, this is also a theme and uncertainty because nobody knows what's going to happen next and how they'll accept german or will they be not uh, will they not be able to accept that language so this is also a very chaotic time for them and the displacement the theme of displacement we can say uh, Uh, we can see uh, see that with reference to mr m hamel who now has to leave his place and go to somewhere else because of the profession that has ended and there might be many other reasons more and then we can also notice the magnitude of damage that one country has to suffer after they have lost 
uh, their place in a barrel okay and we see france as the representative figure who uh, is like very um, representative of the future of france which is like so uncertain and we also notice this thing called generational failure where the parents of france have failed to make him learn make him get a grasp of his language make him get a grip of over his language okay and of course the teachers teachers are also coming in the same category and <clears throat> we see that the our author has used the child narrator who is speaking everything so innocently and he is depicting his emotions very clearly we can notice his emotions of joys of fear of embarrassment etc and uh, we also notice how personal reg uh, sorry prussian regime has affected had affected um, the life of french people and to be very specific the life of people of Alsace and lorraine so this is all about this chapter and i hope you uh, after like going through this video you will learn a lot about this chapter and you will get to know everything uh, every possible thing that you should have known about this chapter and i hope uh, you'll get a good grip over this chapter after going through this video that's all from my side thank you so much